and it is official now. Due to Rafael Nadal's lack of participation at Indian Wells, he will finally drop out of the top 10. So it's been an 18 year streak of Nadal constantly being in the top 10. He first arrived in 2005 and ever since he's been a staple of men's tennis, especially in the upper echelon of men's tennis. So it's quite an insane achievement to be in the top 10 for that long, considering Nadal was the most injury prone out of the big three. And obviously they never dropped their level in that time span to be below a top 10 level. Obviously, uh, Novak and Federer never dropped their level either. It was just due to their injuries and the amount of time they took out and therefore the points they missed defending. Yeah, so Nadal is not able to defend his final appearance from last year after losing to Taylor Fritz. So he will be dropping out of the top 10. And I guess another new entrant in, into the top 10. So who, who could it be? Potentially anybody. Because everyone is in somewhat good form like because uh, Sinner could go in because he didn't have a, an amazing uh, Masters 1000 swing in March particularly in Indian Wells and Miami although he did have that blockbuster match last year in Miami against Karenio Busta anyone else potentially like Cam Norrie who's in the race to be in the top 10 after winning Rio so literally anyone or I don't know Francis Tiafo who's in the top 16 in the live rankings, he could potentially uh, rise up. So, especially at the singles live, we'll see that Hubert Hercatch is back in the top 10 currently, but in the singles live, they haven't counted any points. But Hubert Hercatch is very good in these conditions, especially in Miami, because he did win it in 2021 and lost to the champion last year in Carlos Alcaraz. So, but there's several other opponents on the cusp of the top 10 as well, like in the single live rankings. Cam Laurie is 12th, Sin is 13th, and Zverev is 14th, and Karen Kachanov is 15th. And he can get, he's basically can get 3,400 points, 3,500 points, 3,600 points if they win the tournament, which will firmly put them into the top 10, potentially. So there's quite an opportunistic period for people now to get their way into the top 10. Obviously, the people closer to it will fill, will fill it in, but you, know, you never know in tennis. It, anything can happen. There's two for grabs, potentially. So, yeah, but once again, I'd just like to reiterate that Nadal is dropping out of the top 10 officially now in the live single rankings this week due to him not playing in Indian Wells, which is a shame because like, it's one of those nice unbreakable records that he could have kept extending if he hadn't got injured because all he had to do was um, defend at least some of the points anyway and he would have still been in the top 10. But these records that the big three have set are looking tougher and tougher to beat considering how generational they are because that top 10 record you can like you can literally lose that record for any injury and it's amazing that Nadal despite his extended periods of absence on the tour has remained in the top 10 so thank you so much for watching and listening take care of peace